Good evening, everyone. No. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this evening's Board of Education meeting being held in the Town Hall's chambers. The date is Tuesday, January 20th, to January 20th, 2020. I appreciate it if you turn off all your cell phones and electronic devices. Ellen, please take roll call. Thank you, Chairperson Carey. Good evening, everyone. Mr. Cassio? Present. Mrs. Evans? Here. Mrs. Granado? Here. Mr. Lesser? Here. Mr. Michaels? Here. Mrs. Paradise? Here. Mr. Riley? Here. Vice Chairperson Mr. Healy? Here. Chairperson Mr. Carey? Present. And Weathersfield High School student representative Mr. Isaac Santos? Absent. All the rest present. Thank you. Could I have the elementary school principals stand up and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Mr. Emmett, student and staff recognitions. Yes, thank you, Mr. Carey. Good evening, everyone. Um, the Weathersfield Public Schools suffered a significant loss uh, to our school community with the passing of Weathersfield High School English teacher Drew Nicholas. Drew passed away on January 20th. Mr. Nick, as he was known, joined the district in 2000 following a five-year uh, stint with the Windsor Locks Public Schools. Drew taught a variety of English courses during his time at the high school and he was also involved in drama productions. In addition, he would also be seen out on the softball field coaching girls softball. Drew was also well known for his support of international trips. He coordinated a variety of trips to Europe over the years, which allowed students to broaden their horizons and learn outside of the classroom. In fact, Drew was planning out his next adventure to Greece in 2021, he came before this board. Although dealt with many health challenges through the years, Drew's focus was on teaching. Never one to draw attention to himself, Drew was most content inspiring the minds of the students he worked with. Mr. Nick will be sorely missed. Please join me in a moment of silence for Mr. Drew Nicholas. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Emmett. Moving on to the approval of minutes, do I have a motion to approve the January 10th, 2020 Special Board of Education meeting? So moved. Do I have a second? Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Abstain. Abstain. Do you need names? I have you. Me. Mr. Cassio, Mr. Lesser, and Mr. Michaels. You no. are there, Mr. Oh. Lesser? Okay, so three. You were there, I believe. <laughs> Thank you. Motion passes. Do I have a motion to approve the January 14th, 2020 regular Board of Education meeting? So, so moved. A second? Second. Any discussion? Uh, I have, a, I guess, a, a comment uh, regarding uh, the, the policy uh, 5300. Uh, it looks like the credits uh, that are listed uh, do not total 25 as in the presentation. So I believe we need to add uh, the three credits of electives so that uh, people aren't coming back five years from now with 22 credits and saying, I followed your guidelines. You got that in the minutes? Yes. Okay. I'll make the correction. Also, it says that I was there, and I was not. <laughs> Any other comments or corrections? All right, all in favor for accepting the motion with the corrections, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion oh, passes. Abstain. Oh, abstain. There we go. Motion passes.
Do I have a motion to approve the January 18th, 2020 Special Board of Education meeting? So moved. moved. Second? Second. Any qu comments, discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. Motion passed. Oh, stay. I'll get there. Two. No, I didn't abstain. Oh, no. No. Just me. Just her. All right, moving on to public comment. Anyone in the public wishing to make comment may come up to the podium. State your name and address. Seeing none, we'll move on to communications. Mr. Emmett. Thank you, Mr. Kerry. Good evening again, everyone. I have a few brief items this evening. I uh, just want to make sure that the public is aware. We have our next budget workshop coming up this Thursday, January 30th, from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock at Stillman. I also want to announce uh, that uh, decided upon at this evening's Finance and Information Management Committee meeting, we will be canceling the Saturday uh, budget workshop, which was scheduled for Saturday, February 1st, uh, from 9 to noon at Stillman. The next budget meeting after this Thursday will be next Wednesday. That's February 5th. That'll be another one from 6 o'clock to 8 at Stillman. So once again, the budget uh, workshop scheduled for this Saturday is going to be canceled. Uh, the budget workshop Thursday, January 30th from 6 to 8 is on, so please feel free to come out. And we look forward uh, to continuing our good work that we're doing on the upcoming 2021 budget. Um, I had mentioned earlier in staff student recognition uh, about the loss of Mr. Nicholas. I do want to report to the board this evening that um, we have moved uh, quickly in securing a certified English teacher, a uh, gentleman by the name of Ryan Christensen. Uh, he comes aboard officially on Friday where he'll be working with students. He is currently uh, quote unquote onboarding right now, so he's becoming familiar with the curriculum. He's shadowing, so he is currently in this week. Um, so we're very pleased to have been able to um, secure uh, a replacement. He is certified um, doing his undergraduate work at uh, UConn in both uh, dual major English and history and um, has a master's degree from the University of Bridgeport. So we're glad to have Ryan aboard. Um, he certified before he graduated? He, is, he has graduated. Oh, he has? He has he's graduated. Okay. No, he has graduated. Okay. That's, he is done. Okay. Done and certified, so we're all set okay. there. Um, also want to uh, let you know that our friend and colleague, Mr. Moore, um, is currently out on medical leave. So we wish him a speedy recovery. We expect him to be back within the next several weeks. Um, also, want to just uh, give a shout out to the Weathersfield High School girls basketball team, currently ranked uh, in the state. I see in the New Haven Register, ranked number six. Had a, a big win over Newington last uh, Friday evening. Um, so our sports teams continue to do well. Hockey program suffered its first loss of the season last Saturday, uh, but currently at nine and one and uh, doing quite well in Division Two. So. Um, we're also going to be gearing up uh, at the high school level for the spring production and also want to bring attention to our elementary schools. We have a series of um, cultural nights coming up at our um, elementary schools. I know I got invited to uh, Hanmer's already, so I'll plan to be there next week. Looking forward to that. So if you have the opportunity, please make sure you're checking your school updates uh, so you can see all that's going on in our schools. And with that, it's communications. Thank you, Mr. Emmett. Moving on to action items. Do I have a motion to approve the Finance and Information Management Committee name change? So moved. A second? Second. Mr. Emmett, is there any comments? Yeah, this um, name change was proposed by Mr. Michaels. Um, it certainly makes sense. The information management component is something that we can cover in our Community and Public Relations Committee meetings. Excellent. Any <coughs> questions or comments? <coughs> all, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Do I have a motion to approve the revised policy 5300? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Um, Opposed? Excuse me. I, I think for the public's sake, who's living at home, that doesn't oh. help them. Um, approval of uh, uh, policy 5300. I think we should elaborate that we are re we are approving the graduation requirements. I don't think people at home are hearing that. Did you? Did we say graduation? No, or I mean, did we mistake. just say policy 55300? Policy 5300. Yeah, okay. so I think if we, for people listening at home, we should be saying it is the revision of the graduation requirements policy 5300. 
from 23 something to 25 in the year 2023, graduating class 2023. This, uh, for the edification of the public, this goes back to the previous board meeting where we had the presentation by high school staff uh, related to the graduation requirements. This was also brought forward at the Student Programs and Services <laughs> Committee uh, prior to coming before the board. Um, as was stated at the presentation, this is a state mandate. Um, and this uh, information was done through a collaboration with high school staff and administration. Thank you. Did we vote? Did it vote or do we need to do it again? Do it again. Please. Do it again. Okay. Not vote. I have to, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention. Motion passes. Motion to approve the curriculum English 10. Can someone speak to that that was at that meeting, please? Once we have the, once the motion, mo once it's first and second, we can speak to it. Okay, all right. So, move so moved. Second? Second. Any discussion? I just like a little what's English 10 mean. Mrs. DeSoli, could you come <laughs> up to the podium and just uh, provide that information if you could please? Thank you. This is brief. Good evening. Um, our English teachers worked on revising the English 10 curriculum. So um, this curriculum uh, represents the different units uh, and the standards covered for the curriculum. And such as what would be in this? Would be the, would we be doing uh, literature? Is it? It's. A, is yeah. It so it covers literature, reading, writing um, uh, skills of a, a broad base. Um, so all the expert questions um, were really discussed at student programs and services by um, teachers. Um, so I don't have a detailed overview pre prepared for you this evening, okay. um, well, but within the curriculum, you can see the different units and the topics. Okay. You'll, you'll, if I can, uh, yeah. in, in, the, in your packet, you'll see how the course is described. Uh, it's a very rich uh, curriculum, uh, good reading materials, I thought. Uh, we had a great discussion about uh, the fact that it gets into all the uh, components of objective uh, uh, writing and uh, literature study. Pretty, I think it's pretty robust. I like it. I mean, personally, I, I thought it was very robust, and I'm, I'm glad we're moving forward with it. But there's, it, there's lots of details. <coughs> if you want to get completely granular, but no, you know, we I did agree, have an extensive discussion about it, and uh, I thought that the, not only the required curriculum, but the additional curriculum was good too. So, while you're up there, do you want to highlight all the changes, and then we'll, before we go through? I know that um, they were all discussed at student programs and services, um, and the teachers came to do those discussions. Yeah. So I, I'd be happy to answer questions that come up, but um, typically we have most of those discussions at student programs and services. Right, I just wasn't sure. Just yeah, in case. yeah, okay. we can. I, I can give you a couple of highlights. If you want to go to the next one? You want to take them we'll all at once, or do you want to just go one by one? One by one. We'll okay. do one by one. Okay. okay. Can I have a motion to uh, approve? Where there? Can I, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Abstention. Motion passes. All right. A motion to approve curriculum for statistics. So moved. A second. Second. Discussion, Mr. Healy. I, I believe this one had, and that Sally can back me up about fill it in if my mind kind of sawdust, but it had to do with the fact that we were trying to really uh, keep a lot of the people that break this gap we've had with math and you take it as uh, if it's the first math, the first course of math and there's a break in between. Is that what we were talking about then? Do you, do you uh, that would be a uh, name change, I think you're yeah, referring to. So this statistics is a, a level one course. Yeah, that's for the second one, I'm sorry. Yeah, that for the math department. Going, but it's a statistics It's a t statistics course, pretty straightforward. Uh, yep. Obviously very important in the world we live in now and even more so. Uh, and I was told that there's a lot of interest obviously in it now. Statistic has a large enrollment um, and actually is recommended for a lot of um, math, um, obviously math majors, but medical majors, business majors, yeah. it has very high enrollment. And so this course will really um, represent some foundational statistics skills um, and revise to reflect their current uh, scope and sequence. Isn't it also a graduation requirement now? Um, no, uh, no course is specific required for graduation. There are um, nine credits of STEM required, so statistics could be one of those courses, mm -hmm. but it's not required for all students for graduation. I know when I was on student services, we discussed that all kids should have some kind of statistics course. Um, yeah. Uh, back when I was on that, because 
it's you for college, if you're headed for college and you've never had a statistics course in a lower level, it like is way overwhelming to our kids. So it basically, are we encouraging all kids at Wethersfield High to take some kind of statistics class? We are. I know that and we, was- We have it offered at uh, multiple levels, so okay. it attracts different course, uh, different types of students. Um, and as I mentioned, our enrollment is fairly high in statistics. Okay. And this is a this is an introduction course. Yeah. Thank you, Jim. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Motion to approve the curriculum for civics. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Um, I just like to say when I um, am out in public and I'm with you know people asking questions about education, this is a question I'm quite often asked: Do we teach civics? You know, I guess it's because of the state of the world, and um, we did change it from ninth grade to twelfth grade. Correct. I do know that, which brings them closer to when they are eligible to vote. Correct. Which I like that idea very much, but yes, and I like your word, Chris. Robust. This is a very robust course. It is, it's a lot of background. Um, I think this ties in nicely with our um, goals, and again, you'll hear this elementary school present around our civic engagement, mm -hmm. um, but this is a course specifically designed for our seniors now. Um, that's why we have a curriculum revision. We've always had a civics course. We've had a curriculum given with the grade change. Um, we uh, have a revised curriculum to make sure it's appropriate. And it's um, interactive. It's, it's not just reading from a book. It so is. that's a plus as well. Learning about our community, our state, our government. Yeah, I, li I, I like every piece of that. We talked about, again, on, again, it's a, it's a community meeting uh, with great detail. So I'm, I'm, I think it's great. And uh, I, think it's, I think it's the right age uh, for mm. kids to get mostly engaged, engaged in it. So thank you. Any more discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion passes. Motion to approve the course sequence change geometry honors and algebra two honors. This is where I jumped the gun. Yeah. You want to explain that a little bit? Yeah. Can we have, oh, 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 hold on. I need a motion first. So moved. A second. Second. Thank you. Discussion, Mr. T Ms. Testoli. Yeah, so this is a recommendation in uh, course sequence change for our honor students. Uh, currently, our honor students um, will take Algebra 1 at the middle school in eighth grade, um, enter the freshman year, and take Algebra 2, then Geometry honors. Um, we're simply looking to recommend the math department based upon discussion and analysis of data. Um, preparing students have really recommended to flip that. Um, so they would enter as a freshman and take honors geometry, um, and as a sophomore, take geometry. Um, so the courses they take um, will be similar. Um, when you talk to the math experts, uh, they'll tell you a lot of nitty gritty details around why the order of the course uh, foundationally makes a big difference um, and based upon feedback from their department and a lot of discussion, um, it's really recommended to flip flop the order of those courses um, for our class next year. And we were a little unique in the way we were doing this. Correct. correct. Most, most, most districts schools, are following the new sequence. The, where we're going. Not yes. to say we have to be completely uniform in everything, but it seemed to we're consistent. Well, it builds a stronger uh, platform for them. To Correct. Our teachers um, that are experts in the math department uh, really believe that this is great for the sequencing and building of concepts over the years. Um, and simply, it's a flip-flop of course sequence from uh, grade 9 and 10. Thank you. Chuck? Any more discussion? Yes, Mr. Lesser. Thank you, Chuck. Um, so, Sally, this would be effective for next year. So, eighth graders now at Silas Dean, they're taking Algebra 1. Next year, they would start with geometry and then go as sophomores to algebra two. Is that correct? correct? Um, in the yes. honor in the honors track. Honors track. So yes. that would start next fall. Next fall. Coming fall. Okay. Yep. Got it. Thank you. Any more? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Abstention. Motion passes. Can I have a motion to approve the new course algebraic foundations? So moved. A second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention. Motion passes. Approval of the course deletion integrated math one and integrated math two. So moved. Second? Second. Any discussion? Yeah. Sally, could you explain that one too? Sure, yeah, our math department has also been studying um, our students that um, traditionally need more than one year in algebra. 
um, and that need some additional support um, and time and, and math concepts. So they've made the recommendation um, to move away from the two courses called Integrated Math 1 and 2 um, and create a course called Algebraic Foundations to provide students that need some extra time in algebra content uh, because the algebra is really the foundation of um, the higher level math classes, so they'd have uh, an extra year within that content to provide the foundation to then go on to Algebra 2, Geometry, or other math courses. So it's really a redesign uh, uh, for our students that need more time and based upon really looking at typical students, uh, looking at our data and their success in math to provide successful opportunities for them. Um, so that's why we're recommending the new course uh, in Foundations and deleting the courses called Integrated Math. Any more discussion? Mr. Lesser. Thank you, Chuck. So Sally, when would commonly a student be taking that new course? Is that coming into high school? Is that? It would be a freshman course. Freshman course. So you're probably, uh, for most students, you would be in uh, pre-algebra in eighth grade um, and maybe uh, not having a really high grade or great success and great understanding of that concept. Um, in many cases, we'll recommend additional year in algebra before moving on. Thank you. Thank you. Any more? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion passes. Our final motion, approval of the course change in name, Multimedia Communications, to Advanced Video Production. So moved. Second. Any discussion? What was the reason for this? S Sally. You almost got away. <laughs> it's the last one, though, I promise. It's okay. Sorry, I thought that was the last one. Um, so this is a name change to recognize uh, advanced. Um, so we uh, had first-year students and second-year students um, in this course, and um, what we've done is made it a sequential course. So we have advanced meeting the second course. Um, as we've grown this program and uh, developed skills, it's important that we our students have foundational skills in the course and then go into the advanced course. Um, so it's similar naming as our other courses, advanced meeting, second year course. So is video productions a first level course, would you say? Correct. Okay. Yeah, I here we have that course. Thank you. Um, just, just to comment on the tasks that are under um, the description mm -hmm. of the courses, all these courses, is that they do performance tasks and activities, and they oftentimes have to put on some kind of a production. I'm thrilled with that. Yes. Yeah, so that's what they're required to do in the workforce. Yeah, our Blue Eagle News and productions and segments and um, interviewing and putting together different video clips. Um, some amazing work our students do right. under the direction right. of Sue Coco. Thank you, Ms. Thank you, Mr. Stoley. I think we're done with it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion passes. M Mr. Emmett, reports and discussion items. Yes, this evening we have with us our elementary principals and our leadership teams at each of the elementary schools. As you know, at the previous board meeting, we had presentations by uh, both the high school and the middle school. So uh, this evening, we're going to hear about what's going on with our school improvement plans at the elementary level. Someone was supposed to yell action. <laughs> I'll yell cut. <laughs> <laughs> and write that down. All right, good evening. My name is Patrick Cohn, and I am the principal of Hanmer Elementary School. And I have the honor this evening of introducing you to our wonderful team of teachers and administrators to present our school improvement plans. Tonight, all five of our elementary schools will present together. While each of our schools are unique with different personalities, we all share one mission, the success of the children of Wethersfield. To that end, we honor the individuality of our wonderful school communities 
while also working towards a common vision of student achievement and success as we prepare students for Silas Dean Middle School, Weathersfield High School, and beyond. This evening, members of each school's leadership teams will present information pertaining to the school improvement plans. Some examples may be specific to one school or another, but all have the same common thread, the success of our students. At the end of our presentation, please feel free to ask any questions you may have, and we are happy to clarify any information. Thank you for the opportunity to present this evening. So, good evening. I'm Siobhan O'Connor, the principal at Highcrest Elementary School. And tonight we're very excited about really showing you a wide cross-section of our teaching staff to really show the integrated approaches that we're taking to ensure that we're making growth in all of our school improvement plan areas. The presentation is going to be broken up into the three areas of the school improvement plan. The first you will hear from, from our, our academic areas. What is really wonderful is as you see this presentation, you're going to see the strategies that are being employed throughout the district to ensure that all students make academic growth. Good evening, I'm Glenn Hoarder, principal of Charles Wright Elementary School. A key component of our school improvement plans include problem solving. From a young age, from kindergarten on, if our children do not help, know how to work together, team together, uh, collaborate, um, we won't make it in the world in the future. And so our goal is to ensure that by the time they get to high school, those skills are there. Good evening, I'm Neela Takor, principal from Emerson Williams. Um, we'll be speaking tonight about our civic goals and by the time our students leave uh, grade six to enter SDMS, we really want our students to understand that they are part of a community. Um, they're certainly part of their classroom community. They're part of the school community. They're part of the town of Wethersfield. They're part of a state, a country, and a global community. And we want our students to, to develop a strong sense of self-efficacy that their voices and their actions matter and that they can make a positive difference in this world. And we know that when we tie everything together, the academic skills along with the problem solving skills, this is going to be what helps them to make this positive difference in our world. <coughs> Sorry, I overclicked. Um, this evening, we have uh, members of all of our uh, leadership teams here with us. All of our schools have leadership teams. And you're going to be hearing from the folks who are really on the front lines of all of the strategies and goals and efforts that we have in place at all five of our schools. We are so grateful um, for these staff members who are here with us tonight. We have staff members who, will, speak, who are, will be speaking, and we also have staff members who are here just in support of our leadership teams. So if I could just briefly ask all members of all leadership teams to just stand and be recognized just for one minute. Thank you. So the, the first group that we have up here tonight um, will be speaking about our academic goals and strategies. And if I could just ask you to state your name and what school you're from and what your role is. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Jennifer Hammer. I'm the ELA Curriculum Specialist at Webb and Emerson Williams. Um, related to our academic goal and the bullet under um, growth in all academic areas, um, I think one important strategy that has allowed us to measure um, student growth and continue to triangulate rich data is the continued work of the Assessment Review Committee. Um, this team of 15 teachers um, began work last year and have continued work this year, so a multi-year, multi-phased process to analyze our current assessments. And what we've done in this committee is really look at the, um, each assessment very critically on our assessment calendar and determine what's the purpose of the assessment, how is it helping to drive our instruction, how does it align to our curriculum, and most importantly, is it helping us measure student growth. Um, this team has also worked um, and continues to work to identify any repetition or gaps in our assessment calendar in the hopes of being able to get the best picture of each and every child and determine that they're making academic growth. Good evening. I'm Leanne Silver, the reading consultant at Highcrest School. 
So if students are not making adequate growth, teachers and specialists together create a plan of classroom or SRBI tier one differentiated and targeted instruction with a specific goal set in mind for that particular student. Support is provided to teachers to implement the instructional plan and to also accomplish that SRBI goal with the assistance of the reading and math tutors within the classroom setting. Good evening, I'm Ann Malloy, um, Content Curriculum Specialist at Hamner and Highcrest Schools. Um, to add on to what Leanne said, classroom teachers and instructional specialists continue to monitor students' progress and may determine that more intensive interventions are needed in addition to the classroom support if adequate growth is not being made. Reading and math tutors help provide students with SRBI Tier 2 interventions outside of the classroom or through a Tier 1 within classroom model to support classroom instruction. Classroom teachers collaborate with specialists as a team throughout the process to ensure that students are making adequate growth and meeting their targeted goals. Good evening, I'm Robin Grenier. I'm the reading consultant at Hamner School. Um, at our second bullet to relaunch um, the Readers and Writers Workshop, emphasizing goal setting and differentiating um, within the Tier 1 instruction. So as our staff continues to grow and change, we've made a promise to deliver our curriculum with a solid workshop model philosophy. This fall, we've been lucky to have the opportunity to reflect on our practice and ensure fidelity between all of our schools. Within the workshop model, we are able to set specific student goals, plan small group instruction, and deliver mini lessons that have each student's needs in mind. All of this to strengthen our Tier 1 instruction. Good evening. My name is Nicole Utrusis. I'm a kindergarten teacher at Emerson Williams. And one very important academic strategy that is happening district-wide is the full implementation of the new Teachers College Phonics program in kindergarten through grade two. This program was rolled out district-wide in kindergarten in grade one last year. And this is the first year that is rolled out district-wide in grade two. I'm sure most of you are familiar with what phonics is. But for those of you who are not, phonics is a very specific and methodical way of teaching reading and writing where sounds are correlated with letters and groups of letters. The current program that we are using is research-based, strategy-based, efficient, and highly engaging for our students. We are seeing a very big payoff in our students in both areas of reading and writing. From my own personal experience, I have seen so much improvement in students' writing using all the skills that they have learned in phonics. Hi, my name is Stacy Malanguaggio. I'm a first grade teacher at Webb, and I'm going to add on to some of um, some comments about phonics. Um, the first thing I wanted to share is the engagement piece that the units of study offer. Um, I've never seen first graders, kindergartners so excited to learn phonics. Um, that engagement piece there, each uh, unit, each grade level has a mascot, and every unit has a storyline that goes along with the mascot. And this helps for um, just purposeful, highly engaging, motivating learning. And so when students are motivated and engaged, they are learning. Um, and then the second piece I wanted to speak to is the amount of transfer that is happening. So in order, you know, teaching phonics is to improve reading and writing. And the units of study, every lesson has many opportunities to apply these skills in actual reading and writing. And so not only are they practicing these skills in many lessons, but also in reader's workshop and writer's workshop. Um, I can speak for myself. I have um, children that are less likely to ask how to spell words, who are more apt to um, tackle hard um, words that they want to decode. I can simply say, use your phonics, and they can draw on all the skills that they have learned. Um, and that's the goal, is to make these skills transferable and for them to apply them on their own. And so because it's you know K1 and 2, we really look forward to um, the ripple effect across the district, as well as across all grade levels as we continue to move forward.
Good evening, Brittany Saloni, special education teacher at Highcrest School. And Sue Gallo, grade four teacher at Highcrest School. We're going to talk about collaboration. And um, that's why we're doing this together. <laughs> together. <laughs> <laughs> During the spring of 2019, the leadership team at Highcrest School identified as a need um, of collaboration between special education teachers and general education teachers. Um, our principal, Siobhan O'Connor, helped to create a duty schedule that allowed us for afternoon collaboration time. We had to get creative because collaboration is so important, but time is our enemy. So with our wonderful uh, leadership team and our, the support of our principal, we were able to find that time. And Brittany and I have found that time to be so valuable. Because we have that time every week to sit down and talk about our students, we know what's happening in both settings for those students all day, every day. We can talk about their IEP goals and we can say who's meeting what and when. Um, so it's very, very valuable for the staff and the students. Good evening, my name is Kristen Rodriguez. I'm the school psychologist at Highcrest School. I'm going to speak with you tonight a little bit about the social emotional curriculum. Um, this curriculum was written by a district committee during the 2017-18 um, school year. It, is, it consists of 20 lessons that are delivered to all kindergarten, first, and second grade classrooms. And the delivery model changed a little bit um, in each of the different elementary schools, but the school psychologists, school social workers, and speech language pathologists are the ones that are delivering at least some of the lessons um, within these classrooms. As a district committee, we agreed on three competency areas. The first one is self-awareness and self-management. The, the second is social awareness and relationship skills. And the third is problem solving and responsible decision making. Good evening, I'm Tara Service. I'm a kindergarten teacher at Highcrest School. Going off of what Kristen just shared, um, and speaking from a kindergarten teacher perspective, I have found the SEL curriculum has been so valuable to not only my students, but to us as educators. Um, as these kiddos come in as kindergartners, everything is new, the expectations are new, the routines are new, everything's exciting. But with these new expectations, um, sometimes big emotions emerge. And it's really important that they're supportive um, and they're, they obtain skills that they're able to use independently to help self-monitor themselves in a, in a meaningful way and acquire skills that they can use as they carry on throughout the grades. And it's also very important, I think, and I found that my students have started to develop relationships with the support staff. They'll see Mrs. Rodriguez in the hallway and they'll get very excited because they know who she is and it's just a regular presence for them and someone who they feel very comfortable with in addition to their classroom teachers. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Laura Veda, sixth grade teacher at Hanmer Elementary. While the district's SEL curriculum has been implemented in kindergarten through second grade classrooms across the district, the ultimate goal is to instill these practices and strategies throughout intermediate and upper, upper intermediate grades as well. At the building level, schools are working to develop a common language in regards to emotional regulation and de-escalation strategies to benefit all of our students. At the district level, an SEL assessment committee has recently been formed. The committee is comprised of 18 members representing classroom teachers, special service providers, and administrators from a K-12 perspective. The purpose of this committee is to review common SEL assessments and their impact on classrooms and students. This committee will meet in February and in March with the intent of creating an implementation plan based on the assessment that's selected. Hi, I'm Carissa Marzajewski, the school social worker at Emerson Williams. Um, so under the category of problem solving, there are many things we do to teach and model problem solving for our students so that they can become critical thinkers and excellent problem solvers. The strategies that we teach for problem solving pertain to academics, but also social situations and behavioral choices. 
At Emerson Williams, our school community has been utilizing behavior reflection forms as a tier one behavior management intervention. This form is used school-wide not as a punishment but as an opportunity for students to reflect on their choices and consider how that particular behavior choice may have affected another person. Our staff created three versions of this form so that, the, so that they are appropriately differentiated for grades K through two, third grade, and grades four through six. Many of our students can complete these reflection forms independently, but for others um, who may need some additional support, we have teachers, social workers, school psychologists, paras, and parents to help them help coach them through this problem solving process. Hi, I'm Alex Lucas, grade five teacher at Emerson Williams. Um, so piggybacking off of what Carissa said, we use behavior reflection forms at Emerson Williams. So I just brought some examples to kind of talk through them with you. Uh, so like she said, we have one for K2, we have one for third grade, and we have one for grades four through six to make it really uh, developmentally appropriate for the kids at each grade level. So you'll see the grades four to six is a little bit more lengthy, a little bit more um, thinking on their own. The grades K to two is a little bit more provided to them. They can circle what they did, they can circle how they're feeling. And these reflection forms are really designed, like Carissa said, not as a punishment, but to get the kids to think through the problems, right? So what were you thinking when this happened? You were mad. How does that connection connect to the action that you took, right? So after they make that connection, what was I thinking? Okay, so what did I do? Who did it affect and who did it impact? And then really the most critical part is what can I do now to rectify the situation? How do I need to fix it? How can I change it next time? Um, so uh, we have everybody sign it. The kid signs it, the teacher signs it to provide a conversation to, or to allow for a conversation with the teacher. And then also the parent signs it at home to allow for a conversation. And they're not specifically for consequence. Um, they are really a strategy to try to get the kids to kind of think through their actions a little bit more thoroughly. Thank you. Could you pass those around please? Yeah. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kathy Zillahy. I'm a second grade teacher at Charles Wright, and I'm going to touch on problem solving in the academic areas. So as we know, problem solving is probably one of the most important life skills we're ever going to have. And so in addition to self-regulation and responsibility, we want our kids to be able to solve all sorts of problems. And when it comes to academic problem solving, it's not just persevering to solve a math problem. It's a matter of how do are we teaching our kids to work collaboratively. Um, I love that you guys were talking about phonics because we launched second grade phonics this year. And one of the huge elements that we need to be successful is problem solving. The children are learning to manage their materials. They're learning how to try out different skills that they've learned. They're learning to work in collaborative groups and figure out how are we going to divvy up the responsibility and the, ta and the tasks that we can all be successful. Um, another thing that we're doing for problem solving is, I, I don't want to go too long, um, we are teaching the children how to help each other. So we're saying, well, who can be your coach? Who can you go to instead of the teacher? And so with the help of our curriculum specialist, we are actually coaching into children becoming coaches. So that's pretty cool. And I'm gonna pass off to my colleague, Dee, Dee and she's gonna talk some more about problem solving. Good evening, I'm Dee, Dee Mahoney. I'm a fifth grade teacher at Charles Wright Elementary School. Um, in addition to all the things Kathy talked about, um, what was interesting when she and I sat and chatted about what we were going to present this evening is all the same things she talked about, I was talking about as well. So we are teaching similar problem solving strategies to our young little seven year olds, the same things that we're teaching to our 10 and 11 year olds because those skills transfer and are applicable no matter what age and no matter what discipline a student might be working in. Um, more specifically in math, we are using number talks as a way to help students piggyback off of each other's ideas to build greater understanding for concepts that they get stuck on. Um, it's really amazing when, because the basic rule is you don't talk unless you're the chosen talker during a number talk. But we'll often hear children behind other children whispering something to them to help them to be more successful. And that just shows how well some of these strategies have taken root and students are able to do this work without the guidance of a teacher. 
when there are 20 students in a room and one teacher, they need to have other places to go to help solve problems than just me, because as much as I would like, I can't do 19 kids at one time. So these strategies have helped tremendously. They also learn through these number talks who to rely on when they're stuck during a math lesson. Who can they go to for different types of skills? We are also working a great deal on peer conferencing in our reading and writing workshops. Um, where students are able to uh, analyze their own work using checklists and progressions to determine the quality of the work that they are able to produce at that time, and then sit down with a peer and share where they are at to get guidance from that peer on things they might try to make their work better. And that is symbiotic, right? One, one student pushes another student to rise, and in return, that student pushes their partner to rise as well. We also use grand conversations as a way of improving um, the way we interpret books and texts in our reading workshops so that students are able to, students who may not be able to pick up a theme are able to listen to the way other students analyze text so that they have a better idea of how to put those pieces together for themselves as their reading skills develop and they're able to read more complex texts. And finally, um, probably one of our newest things, especially in fifth grade, we've done a lot of updating to our science curriculum over the past year and a half. Um, we are currently piloting two brand new units this year in science. We started one new unit last year. And part of the backbone of the NGSS science standards is teaching students how to come up with a claim about something scientific, how to provide evidence to support that claim, and then how to explain that evidence to show that they know how to reasonably make connections. And if you take out the science NGSS part of it and think about how does that apply to life, at what point do you not need to make a decision based on some evidence and be able to make sense out of it? So these skills that we're teaching for problem solving aren't really about math and science and reading and writing. They are about skills to make human beings successful as they move forward in life. Good evening. I'm Deb Vicente, a sixth grade teacher at Hanmer. Uh, I'm going to speak to the first bullet point on the civic slide. Uh, the one about students demonstrating awareness and appreciation of issues beyond themselves. Across the district, elementary schools are working to teach students to advocate for both themselves and their community. At Hanmer, this is demonstrated through a number of different activities. Students participate in activities to bring stronger awareness of issues that can affect our school, such as the kindness challenge and wear orange to stand up against bullying. Students also participate in many fundraising activities, ranging from a penny drive for the American Cancer Society, food drives for the Weathersfield Food Pantry, and pajama day for Connecticut Children's Medical Center. Part of our school motto at Hanmer illustrates our commitment to advocacy as well. We make a difference can be heard every day on the morning announcements. Good evening. I'm Robin Muir, art teacher at Charles Wright. I'm Becky Weaver, art teacher at Hanmer. The Unified Arts offers students the opportunity to fulfill civic responsibilities by developing a greater sense of empathy for others and demonstrating acts of kindness through projects such as Jump Rope for Heart and PE and Singing at the Wolfpack in Chorus and in Art, the Empty Bowl Project that Becky will explain. Unfortunately, so many of you know a lot about that already. This spring, the K-12 Art Department is hosting our fourth annual Empty Bowl event in conjunction with our uh, district-wide art show at Keeney Memorial. For this civic project, Weathersfield Art students collaborate to handcraft ceramic bowls, which symbolize the empty bowls in our community. Each piece is sold for a nominal fee, and all of the donations are um, to benefit the Weathersfield Food Bank. Just one more way that our students are looking to give back to those who are most in need and in our community. Good evening. My name is Becky Granatini, and I'm a curriculum specialist in the content area at Webb Elementary School in Emerson Williams. 
Um, and I am speaking on behalf of Webb this evening um, and just saying that um, we recognize that developing a sense of civic responsibility begins with our very youngest learners and, and really that's our, our goal is to, is to begin teaching children about the positive character traits um, that are so important to be um, active, vital members of our, our community. Um, and so we strive to develop a, a greater sense of empathy and kindness among students by building the visibility of positive character traits. Um, we do this by accenting the posi positive um, through town meetings with focus on specific traits being highlighted, including kindness, courage, and honesty, and also through recognition of one another um, through kindness and character cards, um, and just through um, students remarking on positive traits that they're noticing in their, in their peers and classmates. Good evening, everyone. Buenas noches. My name is Rosalia Polino, and I'm the English language teacher at Emerson Williams. And I'm going to be speaking about bullet four tonight, um, which has to deal with recognizing and celebrating and developing knowledge and a genuine appreciation of the diversity that is all around them, not just our school community, um, but our town community as well. Um, two years ago, many teachers were part of a training called um, culturally responsive training. And from that training, a committee was developed at Emerson Williams called the Courageous Conversations Committee. And we've been doing a lot of things to address, um, you know, addressing um, diversity and inclusion. And some of the things we've been doing is having some staff meetings that um, acknowledge the importance of pronouncing students' names correctly excuse me, correctly, um, having a speaker come in and speak about the Islamic religion. Coming up in the spring, we will be hosting a, um, a diverse uh, parent panel. We are also making some, some strides to have different visual displays in our building that um, give students the opportunity to, to see um, women or African Americans that have um, accomplished things in science or the arts. We've also been working hard with our PTO to get some more um, culturally diverse books in our classrooms. And we will be having a cultural night up and coming in March as well. Um, and let's see. Recently, we've had two students come from Argentina and China with very little English. And although it's going to be some time before they feel comfortable in, in speaking and being integrated in our school, we also, as a um, EW community, feel like um, we can learn a lot from them as well. So those are some of the things that we've been doing. Hi, I'm Nicole Antonelli. I am a fourth grade teacher at Charles Wright School. Um, and just to round out the last slide, um, one of the most important ways to help teach children respect and to recognize diversity is to make them feel part of a community. And so we do a lot of work in the school to build community within our schools. It starts in the classroom with things like Responsive Classroom, where we have morning meeting with the kids. We talk about our own lives and how they connect to each other. Um, and then we build that within the larger school community um, at things like town meeting, where each month we come together as a school community. Um, and at Charles Wright this year, uh, each grade level has been taking a different month and really focusing on one aspect um, do they want to share with the school. For example, last month, first grade took kindness, and the first graders taught us a song about kindness, and um, everyone stood up and sang it together. Back in October, we did a lot of work around anti-bullying, because October is anti-bullying month, and the special education and ESL staff took on that town meeting. And our um, EL teacher, who couldn't be here tonight, she organized a video in which many of our students and staff shared how, how to say hello in their own language. And so it really built a sense of there's a lot of different people in our school, and we are all part of our school together. The face of our presentation has changed dramatically this year because of these leaders giving up their time to come tonight. And that really is the motto that we've been following, leader, leader, and it's really nice to see. So my first thank you goes out to all of you.
My second thank you is uh, you, as a board, have given us our focus, academics, problem solving, civics, and even the support of our Leader Leader program. So thank you for putting us in that right direction. We greatly appreciate it. Now, I'm not the expert here. I'm going to field questions and turn them to the experts. So does anyone have any questions on our well, presentation? I'll start, I'll start okay. by thanking all the teachers for your hard work. And it's great to see the Leader Leader motto in action. That's incredible to see all of you here tonight presenting. You guys did a great job. Thank you to the administration for leading our schools in the great direction we're going. As I was, I have a few comments, not questions. Is that right? It's, it's your show right now. Fine. It's good. I think all right. Awesome. <laughs> so as I was, uh, as I was reading this at home and then listening to it here, some things that st stood out as last board meeting. We talked about the profile of the graduate, which is coming from like a top-down effect, which is great meaning from what we want our seniors to be, not top-down <laughs> administration, but what our seniors should be able to do all the way down. And some of the highlights from that was collaboration, problem solving, communicating. So as we're listening to this presentation, the SEL K-2 to mm -hmm. is awesome. I mean, you're talking about self-regulation, problem solving, and all those type of things. So we're already hitting our profile of our graduate at the kindergarten level at the beginning. So what a great connection we have going and a great start to that. But also looking at the uh, relaunch of Readers and Writers Workshop, again, talks to that, pr that uh, profile of the graduate, that communication, that problem solving, those collaborations. I mean, those skills are embedded within those models. I've done reading research on that, and I think it's great that we're going back to that. And I guess my last comment would be on the assessment. I've always been impressed with how much knowledge our teachers have when I go in and talk about my, my children, my personal children. They know them all around my, their social, emotional, their academics, and just the way they talk, talk about them is like, I walk out of there going, wow, they really know my student, and they're really servicing them to the best of their ability. So I think we're doing a great job in that aspect. So those are my comments. Thank you. Any questions? Ms. Granato. Well, I just have some comments. First of all, I'm in awe. Um, number one is you keep it simple. And you know, with the three of them, with the uh, academics, the problem solving, and the civics, but yet it's so complicated. I mean, there was an awful lot presented tonight. My question to you is, is that part of your evaluation? Do you pick something in there to be part of your evaluation? Is it? Um, Who would like to answer how that? How do you keep track of all of it is my. Anyone? Well, I, I think. You can come right up if you want. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, I know you do keep track of it. I do that. But how yeah, do you I do, do keep it? track of it. So personally, for my evaluation, you know, when I met with Glenn about what I wanted to focus on this year, I walked in, he can tell you, with like oodles of data and charts, and I had stuff written all over everything. And he's like, and I, and I said, look, I could do this, or I could do this, or I could do this. But I really think the biggest bang for my buck is this thing. I'm still gonna do this and this and this, but if I have to put one thing on paper, let's put that on paper and we're still gonna do everything else. The other part of it, the question is like, how do you keep track of it all? Yes, we keep track of it all, but honestly, all the work that we talked about tonight has become part of our practice, right. mm -hmm. where it's really second nature and because like when I listen to the K-1-2 teachers talk, I know what they're doing, I'm just doing the next stage of what they're doing. So the kids are already used to it. So really, if you weren't doing it, the kids would notice, you know? Yeah. So. Thanks, Dee Dee. I, I'm in awe. I really am. And thank you all for your hard work. Any other questions or comments? Uh, we'll start with Mr. Cassio. Thank you, Chuck. Um, first of all, thank you for coming out and joining us tonight. It's always good to have company at a board meeting. <laughs> so, <laughs> so thank you for that. <laughs> But, and the other thing is, um, it, it's so impressive to see all the hard work that you do, not only in the classroom, but what you do out of the classroom, to make it come into the classroom so that everyone is doing it. What I'm impressed about is that the faces haven't changed. You know, there are new faces, but there are several of you that I've seen over the years uh, coming and presenting. And, um, I just want to ask a couple questions. I know there were last presentation, or when we had a short meeting at the Stillman Building, several of you were concerned about the buy-in from the other parts of the faculty. I'm looking right at somebody. From Emerson Williams? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so how, 
how <laughs> did that work out? I know that you had some concern from the other faculty members buying into the program. Right. Do I just come up here? That would be great. To, to share with you. So um, after that, we had, we've had obviously quite a few meetings, obviously in the leadership team, and then we had some meetings with, uh, from the leadership team directly with our entire staff. Um, and from the last Board of Ed meeting, it was still a little bit rocky, and it kind of almost crashed like to rock bottom where we had to have a moment where we opened it up and we had a full staff meeting where we um, all had a conversation and we're like, kind in a very respectful and professional manner, let's air our grievances and get it out there. Like, what didn't go well? How, what's not, what's rubbing you the wrong way? What seems to be the problem? Um, and I think in that conversation, which actually Neela did a beautiful job of kind of being open and we, we also set new professional norms, sorry to backtrack, but we also set new professional norms at our building, which one of them is open and honest communication. So Neela did a beautiful job in that meeting of kind of starting with open and honest communication, which led the, the troops into being able to have an honest conversation about it, which allowed everybody to kind of get out some of that um, pent up emotion, if you will, that they were feeling about it. And I would say certainly since then, it has been an upward trajectory, flying miles ahead. Um, so I'm glad you asked, and I'm glad you followed up. Yeah. No, I'm proud of all of you in the room, and I'm proud of you for sticking with it, because I know that you had some reservations. Yeah. And yeah. I, you know, I, I'm just really proud to see your growth and work with the rest of the staff to see it does work. So I think that is a compliment to everyone in the room. So thank you for that. Thank you. Appreciate uh, that. John, point of clarification. Were you talking about leader, leader? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Because the rest of them, I wasn't new, there. New people no, I know. Them. Okay, yeah, I, that's I'm what sorry. I thought. I just wanted to make no, no, sure no, no, everyone no. knew. I, I just wanted to, you know, basically see because it's all connected. And then the other question I have, um, uh, from just seeing the presentation, there has been a growth, and you have a monitor and you see it going. But one of the questions I have, I know we've go, go from K to six in the elementary. Do you ever check on the seventh graders to see what's happening? At Silas Dean, have you ever done like a, um, a, vertical, a vertical articulation, articulation across yeah. the board to see if what you did in elementary school is being carried through SDMS? Is it still working in a different fashion? The kids are, you know, changing, and uh, you know, I just know if that was any part of your activity, or are you just focusing? On the elementary, I understand that, but is there any crossover to see how the seventh graders are doing after their first semester? Anyone? Okay, I'll take it then. Uh, we're, I believe this is an area of our growth, just as we're talking about what does the high school graduate look like. So we've all, we're going to be this year focusing top down from that down to middle school. Elementary principals have always met with the middle school principals. And I'm sure a large part of that discussion because of this emphasis will be, what's been happening? How are we vertically aligned and how we can, how we can do better? No, I think that's important because it's just not, it's our community. And I think that we have to be uh, well aware of the demographics. Once. Some of you probably, well, not all of you, but I'm sure once a sixth grade class goes, thank God they're gone, or <laughs> I'm going to miss them, or really? Yeah. But at the end of the day, you just want to see if it's being carried through, you know, if they don't yes. lose it. So that's all. But thank you. It's great. Keep thank up the good work. Sorry. Thank you. Any more comments? Miss Evans. I almost called you by your, what it's I know right. growing up. Julie Evans works. Um, Obviously, I'll echo everybody else. Thank you so much for coming out and all the work. I don't even know how you guys find enough hours in a day to <laughs> do your jobs and then come here and put all this information together. Um, my two comments were, I was really happy to see the relaunch of the Readers and Writers Workshop model and the implementation of the Teachers Col College Phonics program. I have a kindergartner and a third grader, I just think about that, at Hanmer, and I am social I'm blown away and after hearing all you guys talk I'm like so excited for them that they get to go through and they have so much support and they're learning 
cr these crazy things I didn't I couldn't even imagine outside of the you know the education field. So um, I was just really impressed, and those are two things that stuck out to me. And then the other piece that um, made my heart smile a little bit with the leader leader model is the collaboration between the special ed and the regular ed. Like I don't know how you guys find time in your day. Um, but it's so important, and I think it's so incredible that you guys came together, worked together, and found that time. Um, and I was just very, very impressed. Thank you guys all so much. Chuck, can I piggyback off of that last comment? That was one of mine, Cal, too. But I also want to know, is, is um, Brittany uh, Silva and Sue Gallo were talking about co collaboration between special, I think it was Brittany, um, and regular ed. Is that happening, that principal found a way to do that. Is that happening in all buildings? Are We're on a growing process of that. Yeah, because like, like, we like Kelly said, that's so important to, to hear what's going on in your special ed situation and your ac classroom academics. So I loved hearing that. Uh, but you know, you always had to run after school and hope you were catching the special ed teacher who didn't have a dentist appointment or something else, you know? So it's built in, it's wonderful. I just wanted to share um, that. And I, w I wanted to share that that's part of our inclusive practices that our special ed department district-wide is bringing down to us as well to help us make that happen. continue Chuck is that all right yes ma'am um, um, I heard Laura mention something about assessment in SEL Laura what are we looking for assessments in S SEL are we try as a district you mentioned it as a district-wide committee are yeah. we looking for an um, assessment? we are meeting for our first meeting we have two meetings scheduled the first one is in February, February 5th, the district has um, p looked at, I believe, five different assessments that we are going to look at as a committee to see, to analyze what their impact is, cost, how it's implemented, um, and the plan is to make a recommendation of implementation based on the assessment that we think would meet the needs of our students. Now, we're talking about an assessment that a social worker might give, right? You're um, not going to give this as a classroom teacher. I'm just wondering who's going to take the time to administer this. I'm going to pass, I'm gonna the, pass I that question I off. The idea, but <laughs> I'm just somebody who knows more about it. Yeah, you're it. <laughs> yeah, we're looking for a universal screen like we do in reading and mathematics so that we can prof uh, provide support for behavior. So in our, we talked last uh, meeting about SRBI and that triangle we talked mm -hmm. about. So part of that is language, arts, math, and also behavior. So this would be a universal screen for all students. Um, how it's administered and is oh, something okay. we're going to explore um, through the committee, but it would be you know within the classroom for every student, so not through special education or a specialized okay. student for one student one on one, um, but a, an assessment for all students as a universal screen, so we can then identify students that need additional support. They'll provide that support proactively. And it makes perfect sense given the fact that it's done through a committee. We can kind of quote unquote kick the tires and look at the ones, and I think Laura said it best, the assessment that best needs, yeah. meets the needs Absolutely. of our students. Yeah, yeah. and so. I think it's another great combination, uh, collaboration between the special services and general ed teachers, um, administrators, uh, K-12. So we're excited to get that work started next, well, and I just next month. One more question for classroom teachers. Um, <laughs> some of my students, as you can imagine, are 45 years old by now and they see me in a store and I'll say to them what do you remember about class and they'll say two things kickball and what you read to us mm -hmm. and what you and they can still name behind the deli count, counter at stop and shop the books I read to them so I'm wondering do we still take time to read to children in school because I think that's so okay thank you I didn't know if that fit in the day you know anymore I wanted to make sure we kept that in the day thank you Thank you all for coming and extending your day. Mr. Michaels. Oh, Mr. Lesser, no. Yes. Okay. You know, sure. side down there. I'm happy to yield to you. Thank you, Mr. Michaels. Thank you, Chuck. And I hope we still have kickball, too. But uh, <laughs> um, 
So I, our team. There you go. So I, I want to congratulate you and thank you for all the hard work you're doing. Uh, the Weathersfield school system is already pretty terrific, and now I have faith that it's even better than, than I thought. So thank you for all your efforts. I wanted to drill down on two areas, one in problem solving and one in um, civics. So I think the comment was made, it might have been by a second grade teacher who was presenting about peer coaching. And I found that very interesting. We use that a lot in business, and I think it's a very effective way. But I'm wondering how maybe like a fifth grader would coach a second grader. So I wanted to drill down a little bit on how that might work. I think it's potentially very effective. And then I have a question on civics. Actually, that's not what we're doing. Oh. We're <laughs> Good. So I got it wrong. Well, I probably wasn't clear. So we're actually having peers within the classroom, second graders coaching other second graders. Okay, within the classroom. Okay. Yeah. Not not another grade coaching. Got it. No, but we but, do that at sometimes we'll tap into a colleague if we have a buddy class or whatever and we have a student who really needs a bunch of different things. They might need a really positive role model who's older. They might need someone who can model reading that we're working towards. But we're actually developing within the classroom. Great. And we are teaching the kids to coach each other. And we're also teaching them to identify when they need help. That, uh-oh, I need to ask for help. But it's not, actually going back to SEL, it's not an elephant size problem. It's a mouse size problem. So I can find another child to help me. I think that's great. And I think that's going to have long-term benefits mm -hmm. for the kids and problem solving throughout their life. And, and also acknowledging their problems uh, where they need help and right. where they can help others. So. And what's so great about it is that it gives every child in the classroom the opportunity to be a helper. There's not just certain kids who, oh, go see so-and-so. They are, have a really great skill at this. All children are stepping up, and they're all offering something very special. That's great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. My civics question had to do with, uh, it said, demonstrate uh, acts of kindness or random acts of kindness. And we all know we need a lot more kindness in the world today. But I was wondering how you foster that, how you facilitate that in the elementary school, uh, how you maybe recognize, reward that in terms of uh, in the civics and uh, demonstrating acts of, of kindness that kids do. It's open for anyone. <laughs> and we'll do that. Um, there are wonderful concerts that we have done before. We have, we have been to a four, and we won't do that, but we want to do it this summer. And we cheer those with staff, and they are being sent around, and I see them in our teacher staff. Um, I think some parents have received them, um, and it's just a really nice way that some of the children, when they wanted to go beyond their building, and they reached out to us, and they have also been able to ask for what are some of the um, opportunities we're giving to children to, to do fundraisers for um, and the type of events that take part in with us. So that whole feel of going way beyond one school, going from central office to all the schools, and we do the web cards and the Pilates too for the same type of thing. Mm -hmm. That's great. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Great. And when they learn that at such a young age, it can carry on. It's it's great. Thank you. That's part of our. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All our schools are presenting positive PBIS, as we call it, and that's focusing on positive behavior interventions and rewarding them. That's great. Thank you. Thanks, Chuck. Yes, Mr. Michaels. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I love this presentation model. Um, this newer this year, right? New this year, um, and I'm new this year, so perfect. Um, 
just because you hear from people who are living it every day, not that the administrative level is not living it every day, but sort of boots on the ground, um, great, great style. Second, um, I've taken a picture, but I may actually just steal the whole think sheet um, <laughs> for my pre-K three-year-old at home to uh, <coughs> start that. <laughs> and then uh, just a kudos to Mr. Cohn for logo placement. Um, <laughs> glad to see the owl in the middle. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? Yes, or comments? I just had a comment to make. I wanted to say that I appreciate all of you coming out. Uh, it's really great. I really enjoyed the, uh, the civic aspect of it and also the special ed and teachers uh, collaborating. I mean, we moved here. Uh, specifically um, for the school system and part of that was Emerson Williams so thank you and mr. Emmett I just want to say um, how incredibly proud I am of the work that has been done here um, mr. Cassio was talking about a prior board meeting he was referencing a uh, board retreat that we did last spring and we talked about some of the pitfalls. We talked about how hard this work would be. We also talked about the fact that there aren't many districts doing this work and doing this level of work. So tomorrow morning, I'm meeting with a group of superintendents um, in a network that we are working on with Lyle Kirtman, who has been providing us with ongoing professional development. And I will be sharing the leader leader work and what we've done. And uh, I am very pleased to be able to report the great work we're doing. I would caution the work will remain hard. It's not easy. I don't think everybody's bought in yet. But we know full well that we are focused on the best interest of our kids and making sure that they are the best learners that they can be. So very proud of the work that you've done, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you again. Where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> no, they only have to be up at six tomorrow. Have a good night, everyone. All right, moving on to announcements and information. Board members, make sure you're checking out the committee calendar. If we don't have committee meetings scheduled, please schedule them. If they are scheduled, please make sure you attend or let the committee chair know you cannot make it. Meetings held, Ms. Granado, correct council on 115? Yeah, we had our correct council meeting on Wednesday, January 15th, and correct council is the Capital Region Education Council of which Wethersfield is a member along with 35 other surrounding towns. The council is implementing the rulings of the Chef O'Neill um, court case with the regional magnet schools and project choice. And I attended a yearly orientation meeting that discussed all the services of CREC for the region. And following that meeting, the superintendent of CREC, Tim Sullivan, spoke and discussed the barriers to learning that the CREC educators have identified and worked to correct. Their goal is to close the gap in these magnet schools in academics, opportunities, acceptance, knowledge of others, and respect. The most recent rulings for Chef O'Neill will have an impact on the criteria used for the lottery for the magnet schools and is to provide more seats for Hartford students. CREC is a regional organization. It's a great opportunity for me and for all the other towns to communicate with each other. Thank you, Ms. Granado. Special Board of Education meeting budget workshop on the 18th of January. Mr. Michaels. Oh. Yes, uh, we had one, and it was uh, good. <laughs> Sorry, I was, I was down further on the list. Um, Good first meeting, uh, first major look. Uh, it was great to get some questions out there, to get them answered, to dive a little bit deeper, 
it was great to have um, our mayor and deputy mayor there as well uh, as part of the process and some members of the public. I, of course, encourage more folks to come out um, and, and be involved early in the process. Thank you. Student programs and services on the 21st of January, Mr. <coughs> Healy. Yeah, we uh, adopted everything that was on the agenda. I think you all, we've all gone through it again, unless we want to rehash them line by line. Uh, but it was a good uh, a hearing and, uh, excuse me, meeting, of, and um, we're good to go for the next year with these uh, very uh, thoughtful curriculum additions. Thank you. Facilities and maintenance on the 22nd of January, Mr. Cassio. Thank you. Uh, Wednesday, the Facilities and Maintenance Committee met January 22nd, the Stillman Building, 6.30 p.m. We had a full agenda, but present were myself, Bobby Granado, Elaine Paradise, Chuck Carey, Lou Michaels, Superintendent of Schools, and Director of, Director of Town Maintenance, Sally Katz, as well as Chuck Warrington from Collier and Pat Gallagher from Malone and McBroom. Everyone did receive uh, information of minutes that were kept. However, we uh, reviewed the status of the facilities study which is uh, where performance matters. All of you did receive that in your copy of your board packet on Friday. It's an overview of phase two plan was discussed indicating that we are near completion and looking towards phase three. There will be an update on enrollment projection as well as the budgetary amount for this phase. The, well of, the Weathershield Elementary School master plan was discussed with the committee and copies of this plan were attached. There was discussion regarding the amount that would be needed to reach uh, phase three, and we're hopeful that the town council will have conversation with us on this issue. The committee will review the three options with the full board and pass it on to the community. Okay, so what we've done is phase one and phase two. Phase one was a, a population uh, enrollment study and where we're going to go. Uh, phase uh, facilities, maintenance. Phase two overlapped into the projects. What projects need to be completed and where we want to go with it. The committee uh, of myself, Bobby, the superintendent, uh, Chuck and Pat uh, went through um, over close to two years, two and a half years, working on phases one and two. Um, and that brought us to where performance matters in the elementary school, a master plan, uh, moving it forward. We came up with eight scenarios, and we're going to narrow it down to three, and the board will review all three and then bring it on to the community uh, for buy-in at this point. So um, it's... It's uh, an adventure, and it's something that we as a community need to look at. Uh, what is needed in our schools? Uh, we currently have five elementary, and our phases looked at uh, consolidation, and uh, we're very concerned about the population growth in a particular area. Right now is Highcrest School. Um, they're overflowing, uh, and there are other schools that are not quite to capacity. So we're just re-looking at different plans. Um, we also discussed the current building conditions. Uh, Mike Emmett and Sally Katz reported on the current building conditions of our elementary schools. All buildings are being well maintained and our custodial staff are doing a fantastic job of what they have. However, <clears throat> Portable classrooms at Highcrest are still under discussion. It will be going out for an additional bid, I believe, in February. Um, and many of our sc elementary schools have problems. Uh, you know, we have maintenance problems that the maintenance people can't take care of. And uh, do we put uh, good money into a bad situation? So we have been very fortunate in our district where we've been very creative and working very diligent with the town staff as well as what we have in our building. Um, so we're very uh, uh, concerned for the future and uh, we will uh, be kept up to date uh, with 
what's going on with the various elementary schools, with their leaks. But the good news is all, all of our buildings are safe. We have safe buildings, and uh, we're very concerned about that. Uh, shared services update. The town and board continually work together with shared service on school buildings. This is an ongoing. Sally reminded uh, the committee as well as the superintendent that our buildings are not just being used for teaching. They're being used from 6 in the morning to 11 at night by various school groups. It's continual. It just doesn't open the door and it goes. We have a community, it's a community building where learning goes, but also play. Um, the facilities meeting uh, committee will meet with the full board. I believe the superintendent uh, did a survey of the board when they can get together and meet again. So many of you at the meeting, I don't know if I missed anything, you wanna add anything? Um, please be my guest. Thank you, John. Good job. The Finance and Information Management Committee meeting tonight, Lou. Yes, we had our last meeting of the Finance and Information Management Committee. Um, <laughs> per your approval of our name change moving forward. Um, we talked briefly uh, through a summary of where we're at uh, in the fiscal year. Um, we are still projected um, to be over budget by $71,925. The good news is that number is down from November, uh, down about 124,000. So we are doing our best to bring that down uh, with some different savings that we're realizing um, as we move through the year. We also discussed um, the committee will move forward with a recommendation to the board that we approve a two-year, yes, two years, two-year two year yep. extension Correct. of the uh, Access Transportation and Solutions LLC contract um, for some of our busing and this will also allow us to get all of our busing contracts um, into sort of the same time frame so that when we go out to bid um, for a future contract, it will actually include everything, um, which will help us to perhaps get better rates um, as a bulk contract. And then lastly, we just talked about uh, our budget workshops and a reminder that we have a budget workshop this Thursday, but we have canceled this coming Saturday's budget workshop. Thank you, Mr. Michaels. Meeting schedule, as Mr. Michaels said, we have a Board of Ed workshop this Thursday, 6 p.m. in the Stillman Building. The workshop was canceled for this Saturday. We also have a special ed, special Board of Education budget workshop on the 5th at 6 p.m. at the Stillman Building, and the WEC meeting is February 10th at 4.30 p.m. Seeing there's no unfin unfinished business, moving on to public comment. Anyone in the public wishing to make comment, please come to the podium, state your name and address for the record. Seeing none, moving on to board comment. Any board members have comments? Yes, Mr. Cassio. I just would like to uh, thank the um, principals for their weekly update. Uh, it's very impressive to see what's going on in your building. Uh, keep up the good work, and it's good to, uh, we don't get in the building all the time, but I know the superintendent has tours scheduled for us to go, um, and uh, it's great to read what's happening. Uh, the other uh, I'd like to report on is I um, reached out to the presidents of the Charles Wright uh, PTO and um, talked with Stephanie, and I'll be meeting with them on uh, Thursday, February 13th at their building, uh, Charles Wright. Uh, we do have a change. Uh, David O'Keefe has moved out of district, so he's no longer the co-president with Stephanie. She's doing it on her own. So, But uh, we have a lot going on, and um, I look forward to working with you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other board members? Yes, Mr. Lesser. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a quick report on the Career Advisory Board. We met last night, and thank you to Jim and Bobby and Elaine and the superintendent for, for being there. We have a lot of great things of connecting our students to the business community and the business community to our, our students, but I want to remind everyone of the second annual career fair coming up on April 24th, approximately from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m., and I hope um, our board members can come and members of the public. We had um, about 40 businesses at our first career fair this past year, and we're shooting for about 60 businesses, and the idea is to give our students a peek at different types of careers and industries and professions. Um, so we're super excited about all the work that the folks are doing with the career, uh, career fair and other work with the Career Advisory Board. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you. Yes, Ms. Evans. I'm sorry, can you just repeat that? I got 7 a.m. to 9 a.m., but I missed the date. Yes, yeah, so it's April 24th. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. I was just got that here. Just missed the date. Ms. Brown, did you? And, you know, can I just uh, piggyback on that, which we have. We found out there's so many similarities, and there's so many times they can collaborate. Um, the Weathersfield Education Board also met um, last Thursday, and we discussed working with alumni. We discussed grants. Now that the Keene Foundation is not going to be doing the grants anymore, the Wesleyville Education Foundation will be taking that mm -hmm. over, and also working with businesses and corporations. So that work continues. Thank you. Any more comments? Seeing no, oh, Ms. Drew, yes. Uh, I attended the uh, SEPCO meeting where there was a presentation on the Weathersfield Transition Academy, and there was also uh, a presentation uh, from the state of Connecticut uh, regarding Department of Developmental Services for uh, services after that. Thank you. All right, I'll, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes.